Hello, this is Prodesilos, also known as Prod. In this video, I want to do a quick demo of Tmux, the terminal multiplexer, and explain a bit why I am using it in tandem with BSPWM, my tiling window manager, in my custom working environment on Debian. So now I will open a terminal, which already runs a Tmux session. The session is active. Here I have Vim displaying a file with my main talking point. So Tmux is a program that multiplexes an arbitrary number of terminals. This basically means that it can control the layout of terminals on the screen. Let me show you in practice. So this is one terminal running and I want to create a new terminal next to this one. So I split the screen in half. I can do this again and again. I control the direction of the split whether it is horizontal or vertical. And then I can navigate from one terminal to the other. In Tmux parlance, these splits, these terminals, are called panes, P-A-N-E. Um, so the active pane is the one with the darker uh, uh, background color. So this one is the active pane. And as I move through panes, you see the color moving with me. This is all configurable. Um, this uses one of my themes, uh, which I have. It's the Tempus themes. So let's go on to Tmux again. So Paints is the basic, the most basic way that Tmux multiplexes terminals, that controls terminals. Paints uh, are contained within windows. So if you see here at the top, I have number one, which is the index of the window and the name that I have defined myself. So let's say I want to delete this. So demo Tmux is the name of this window. I, and just as with panes, I can create an arbitrary number of windows. So now I have like five windows and I can move from one to the other. I could also move uh, using their index, but I prefer to do it like from left to right. Um, and then, of course, I can have multiple panes in each window. I can change the layout of the panes dynamically. Again, these are presets, so I can cycle through the various options. There are five options. So here we have it. Let's open some programs, maybe something like this and then maybe have something here as well. Let's go to a third one. And let's close some. Now, um, windows are contained within a session. So a window holds panes and the session holds windows. And the way we can see an overview of this is we see here we have the default session, which has three windows. The, the fact that it is, it is attached means that it is the session I am currently running. I could have many sessions running in the background. And uh, here I see the first window has four panes, two panes, and it shows a preview of what each pane has and one pane. Let's create a new session just to see new session and I give it a name. So this is the demo session and in this I have three panes. Here I have my VMRC. Let's see. And uh, here I have, uh, let's say, I have danced. Here I have danced and here I have uh, maybe the configs to BSPWM. Let's change the layout. So now I am in this session, in uh, the demo session, and I want to go uh, see the other sessions. So my other session is still where I left it. All the windows are in place. I switch to it. I do work here and then I can go back to the other session. As you can imagine, this is a very powerful, powerful feature. You can have something running in the background like 
compiling something or you can have multiple sessions depending on the context of your work. So I may have a session running here where I am doing um, local development and then I have another session where I am um, doing something for work, uh, etc. And it's better to organize your work uh, by session uh, so that that way you can have multiple windows and all relate to one specific activity. At least that's how I conceptualize it. So a session is an activity and within that activity you have windows which is the specific tasks and with each, within each window you have the various panes which is uh, the management of the work in practice. So let's see again. Now I don't really need this so I can start deleting things and once you delete all the active panes in a session the session is destroyed it doesn't exist anymore and we are back to the default session now if you noticed the terminal uh, closed there and I opened it again without losing any of my work and this is one of the powerful features of Tmax which is persistence the content persists so if, for example, I press by accident the key binding which uh, closes the window, which kills the window, Tmax will keep the content in place so I can come back and work as if nothing had happened. So is, this is the equivalent of pressing the X key on, uh, on title bars that have window decorations. BSPWM doesn't have, so I have to do everything via the keyboard. So I close the terminal now. Normally, I would have lost all my work. But the session is active, so I attach back to it as if nothing had happened, which is very nice. And this brings me to the point of using Tmax together with BSPWM. Why would you ever need to have um, a tool that um, tiles terminals, basically, when you have a tiling window manager? Why do you need to tile uh, twice? Why not do something like this? One terminal, two terminals, three terminals, etc. Okay, and you control the gaps. I had a previous video on that, on what are the main motions of BSPWM. Why not do something like that? I think the difference here is that um, BSPWM is great for, for, for tiling any type of window. So it manages windows. That is its task. Whereas Tmax, uh, except apart from tiling uh, terminals, also controls them in ways I already uh, demoed. So it's not just the tiling that you are getting from Tmax, it's also the fact that you have persistence and that you can organize your work depending on the context. And um, this, is, this is excellent. It's good to know about Tmax. It's good to learn to use this tool because you might be in an environment where a tiling window manager or even a desktop environment is not available, such as via, uh, such as through SSH, an SSH connection or in a TTY. In those uh, circumstances, you would just run Tmax, so it would start a Tmax session, and then you would start doing your work as you normally do. Another bonus of Tmax is if you are running a, a terminal that doesn't have uh, some capabilities, such as scrollback, for example, uh, this, this um, terminal I have here doesn't have uh, scrollback. It's, it's the simple terminal by cyclist.org and I have compiled it without scrollback capabilities because I don't need it in the generic terminal. So I'm trying to scroll back here and I cannot do it. Whereas if I were running Tmax, let's switch to Tmax and do the same thing. Tmax provides that out of the box. So I can move up and down and then I can use key bindings to control text, same as with Vim, Just copy it, etc. And this is another nice thing to have. And for that, that's, this is one of the reasons why I'm using ST as my terminal, exactly because I want a generic terminal that does not try to replicate any of the multiplexing uh, features of Tmax because I am a Tmax user. So I don't need my terminal to do the same things as Tmax does. 
Um, those granted, I think uh, Tmax is great for simplifying your workflow, even though this may, this may seem counterintuitive at first. Um, and the reason is because, because you control many terminals centrally, you don't need uh, to rely on the window manager too much. In the past, before using team, before starting to use Tmax, I had like ten uh, workspaces, and I would have terminals uh, scattered across all ten of them. And then I would have to shuffle through workspaces to find where I was and what is it that I was doing. And um, it works, but I don't think it it is the most efficient way to control your workflow. Whereas now I open Tmax, and then I can have as many windows as I want, as many panes as I need, and as many sessions as I consider necessary. Another thing that Tmax has helped me with is to remove all plugins from my Vim configuration. In the past, when I would run uh, Vim, I would have plugins to display, um, you know, Nerd Tree, for example, where it displays a sidebar with uh, the contents of the current directory and you can navigate the file system and find what you need and open it in place. Personally, I think this is not a good way of doing things because a better way is to use the built-in tools of the, of the shell. So I am in the, let's say I am in this folder, my dot files, and let's say I am doing something in the readme and I want to do a quick ls in order to open a new file, this is it. Why do I need a plugin for this? And of course, the same applies for any kind of... Uh, and then I open a new Vim file. Why try to duplicate the shell? And this is the reason why I think um, Tmax and BSPWM make for a great, a great combo because you have all the power offered by Tmax. So as a power user, a terminal power user, uh, you get to do w things more efficiently while also um, doing um, window management more efficiently via the tiling uh, method offered by BSPWM. So you don't have to drag and drag and move around windows or resize them, you know, um, with the mouse and whatnot. And uh, I think this covers it for now. Let's let's also do so. We have we do this, and now again another thing. Uh, in the past in Vim, I had a plugin to show me the Git status. But why do I need that when I can do that with the generic uh, Git command, for example? I guess that covers it. That's all for now. Thank you very much for your attention. If you want to have a look at my dot files, they are available at, let's open a file, me dots, that's the alias I have, gitlab.com protasillas.files. And my website, protasillas.com. That's all for now, folks.